Jeff Bezos has made some pretty good decisions. Launching Prime so that we can order that lovely scented candle in the morning, delivered in time for our evening bath. Releasing the Kindle, which has completely revolutionized book consumption. And of course, monetizing AWS, which is now so big that by law, it has to be its own company. But perhaps the best decision Jeff ever made was starting Amazon in the first place. And he came to this conclusion by using something he calls the regret minimization framework. In this video, we're gonna talk through how you can use this framework to make better decisions so you don't end up crying on your deathbed, eating through a tube with a ton of regrets about your life. So this is the regret minimization framework template that I put together that you can use. And at the top, it's just basically got a brief description about what the framework is um, with a quote from Jeff Bezos. He's basically saying like when he started Amazon, what he wanted to do was think when he's 80 years old, what is he going to regret in his life? And he didn't think that he would have regretted starting the internet and being part of something really big. And that for him made it a really easy decision to push ahead to start Amazon and to not regret the toil and everything that that would have meant further down the line. Now, this is obviously like for him was a fairly easy decision, but often in my life, I often find it a lot more difficult to think about what I might regret and therefore to make decisions based on this framework. So that's why I put this together and let's talk through how you can use it um, to make better decisions too. So firstly, let's just think about what this framework is actually gonna be useful for. Now, for me, the main times that you wanna use this are when you're thinking about big life decisions. I wouldn't go through this process for little things like what I'm gonna eat for breakfast, but things that are gonna be meaningful in your life, things that are gonna be you know, impactful changes, I would definitely recommend uh, using this kind of framework because it really does help to put things into perspective. So things like you know starting a project, picking who you're gonna marry, uh, deciding a new hobby to pick up, different career options, these are all great opportunities for you to use the regret minimization framework. So the actual worksheet itself, I've split out into a couple of different phases. And the first thing you're just gonna to wanna to do is actually make a list of all the things that you think you might regret when you die. And I've put in here the top five regrets of the dying, which is from a book by Bronnie Ware, which I'd recommend checking out if you haven't read it. It's quite insightful in terms of she works at this hospice and she goes and um, sort of asks all of these like people who are dying, basically, like, what did you regret? And then summarizes it in this book. So this could give you some insight into, you know, what other people regret. So maybe you might regret them as well. One of the big things that come up is like that they wish they hadn't worked so hard, that they wish they'd stayed in touch with their friends, um, or that you know they had the courage to express their feelings. Now, obviously, your list is going to be different to this, um, but I'd recommend writing out just you know five different things. You know, maybe it might be that you would regret not using all of your potential or something like this. Um, but yeah, really helpful to just write out these five things about what you would regret when you're dying, just to put things into perspective and just to give you an idea about what a good decision for you would look like. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is just weigh up whether making that decision is gonna impact your different regrets. Now, I think it's quite simplistic, the example that Bezos gave, that it was just, um, a, a binary choice it was just so clear that it was like a yes often when i'm making decisions like this there's pros and cons to both approach which is why i find that putting out the decisions in this way is really helpful so what i've gone here for is a little table and what i would do is put your sort of top five regrets um, from here into the table so i'm just using the example here which is you know these these regrets of the dying from the book um, and then put the two different options that you're considering. So in this example, we're saying, do you want to start a business selling your art or do you not want to start that business? And I'm sure that a lot of you can resonate with this. You've probably got some little project that you're working on that you might want to start selling or taking a bit more seriously. So what you want to do is with the different regrets, just basically put a yes or a no as to whether starting that business is going to lead to that regret. So for example, using the option of starting a business selling your art. Well, the regret here is, I wish I'd had the courage to live a life true to myself and not the life that others expected of me. Now, most likely starting a business selling your art is not gonna result in that regret, but not starting it might. If you just go through your life, maybe, I don't know, your parents wanted you to be like some doctor or something, and then you ended up being a doctor, but then you've got this other passion that you really wanna figure on, then probably you will regret not starting that business. 
So you can just work through it in this way. Uh, you've got the different uh, regrets down here and then you just mark a yes or no. And then it's just very simple. You just look at what's the most no's, what's the most yeses, and then the one with the most no's, so the least amount of regret, is the, probably the one that you're gonna wanna pick to go forward with that decision. The third thing um, I find is it's just really helpful to just write out why you've made that decision at the end of this, because often I find that we can sort of half make decisions. So we'll go through an exercise like this, we'll be like, oh yeah, yeah, okay, I definitely will do that. And then when it comes further down the line and you haven't started it, you tell yourself these excuses like, oh, well, you know, it's risky or, oh, it might cause me to work too hard. But actually I find that if you take the time to after you've made the decision, just put it into concrete steps by saying, I have made this decision because of X, Y, Z reasons, it's gonna be really beneficial for you and it's gonna just cement that in you that this is a decision that you want to take. An example of a statement of your result might look something like this. And what you really wanna do is relate it back to the regrets that you've acknowledged to be true or false for, for each of the different ones. So I choose to commit to selling my art because when I die, I won't regret having the courage to live a life true to myself and to express my feelings. And I also think creating this art is gonna allow me to be happier. I accept the fact that I may regret working so hard. And I think it's really important to acknowledge where you might regret things as well as where you won't regret things and just clarify it in the statement. And I can assure you it's gonna be really helpful when you come to making big decisions. So thanks a lot. And I hope this framework will be helpful for you in some way. Let me know in the comments if it is and enjoy the rest of your day.